practice like a lot of volume lessons, so we'll do it today and tomorrow. Take good notes, they should use, be useful as a reference. So, um, it's a different type of volume problem. It's not volume by revolution, I will explain. If you were to graph in three space, you'll find that when you guys take calc three, it's way, way more like calc one than it is calc two. Um, it's like calc one in three space. And in multivariable or calc three, you often graph in three dimensions. Um, this is then what you'll usually graph in is the right hand, um, which is that x, the x-axis is coming out of the board, the y-axis is here, and the z-axis is there. And you, now, instead of having quadrants, you have Okay, one number line. If I do this, then I just divided all space into two equal pieces. So one variable divides space into two. If you take two variables, then it just divided all space into four. If you take three variables, it divides space into eight. So these are not quadrants, they are octants. They're octants, okay? You do not have ordered pairs, you have ordered triplets. Okay? Now then. Um, we'll, we'll play around with this a little more as the year goes on, but if I were to graph the ordered triple one, two, three, it really is a little difficult to show in three space on a two-dimensional plane. You show it by putting a box to it, basically. If you were to graph that point one, two, three, you'd say here's the x-axis of one, the y-axis of two would be here, and then Z is up three from there, so you'd go up one, two, three, and you would draw a rectangular prism and say there is one, two, three. Now it's necessary to draw that box because without that box, you won't necessarily be able to tell between one, two, three, and zero, 1.5, 2.3. That's that point could be a lot of different points, and so that's why the box draws your visual. Okay. We are going to graph in a slightly different method here. We'll be graphing more in a left-hand approach um, with perspective. So here's the thing: I would like you to graph y equals the square root of x but in three-dimensional space. To do so, instead of looking at the paper like this, you look at it more like this. And if you were to do that, then it starts to be more of a kind of a slant. And if this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis, then one, two, three, four in x, 1, 2, and y. Square root of x would consist of 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. So it might look something like that. Now the region with that in the x-axis on 0 to 4 all together then is that. So far so good? Yes. You did read the prerequisites for this class. Art was a prerequisite. <laughs> Who was not? Okay. I wouldn't have taken it if it was. All right. So, um, that now, this is so weird how this worked out. This, I, taught the, I taught volumes to the pre algebra kids, and now I'm teaching volumes to you. It's so weird. And I, I teach them that. It's hard to get them out of length times width times height. Your goal is to, for them to understand the formula. That is, the area of the base is there, kind of like a plot of land. You're saying, hey, I could put 12 blocks on this level. And then the height's there to say, all right, times how many levels? You could have one level, and it would be a base times one level, or two levels. And so 
This then is our plot of land. We're not going to revolve that. Area. It's not a revolution. That's our plot of land we're going to build off of. How you build off of it, well, that's where the calculus comes in. There are many ways to build off of it. Uh, let's start here. This is going to be the base of a solid. We're going to have equal cross sections built off of that, or not equal cross sections, similar cross sections. Now, I would like you to stripe this thing. I'm going to use DX kind of slices. So would you, at each whole number, put a slice? Where's the Z axis? The Z axis would be here. What? Out. It's up. Okay. So if this, if this was here. No, no, it's not. This is right now. This is left. So don't start. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. I wanted you to. I didn't want you to think that this is the most common vector, right hand actually. But for what we're doing, we'll use left. Hand. All right. So at any rate, don't sweat it. Don't sweat the z axis right now. Although the heights will be coming out of that base now. What we're going to do is make a three-dimensional figure where all the cross-sections or the slices are squares. And they'll be squares, and they're relative in size to the slice I built off of. So this, for example, if this, which has a length of 2, is a square, then the pieces coming out of them will also be too high. And that then would be a square cross section with two by two. This down here at one is one, so its heights would be one coming out, one high and one across. The ones in between one and four, not pretty. Square root of two is about 1.4. So I'm going to go up 1.4. And the square root of 3 is maybe 1.7-ish, so I'm going to go up about 1.7. So is that a 4.7 up the z-axis? Those heights are in the z-axis, yes. That would be a height of z of 2, height of square root of 3, z of square root of 3, and so forth. Yep. Okay. Now, I only showed, in order to keep my picture from getting too busy, I only did it at the whole numbers. But there are actually slices or cross-sections everywhere in between as well. Now, if I then took all those cross sections, and let's say I connected these frontmost points, and I'd get something like that. And if I connected all those backmost points, because I'm getting infinitely many slices, i get something like this. All together, then, that's the three dimensional figure that's generated. You can see it's not through revolution, it's by cross sections, and I add all those cross sections. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now, the calculus question in hand then is to find the volume. Now, first I'll say this. This is, this is kind of the genesis of the 3D printer. That when you make when you make a 3D printer or a 3D printing of something, which I asked for a 3D printer from foundation, but I got to point. They they measure distance to the figure from lots of different directions, and they say, all right, what's the shape of this cross section? And they make that, then they lay a slice of the material of that shape. And then they go up a little higher, and they make a cross section of that slice and that slice. And so it's very much a cross sections. They're not equal cross sections. Depending on the figure, they can actually be lots of different shapes. But that said, we're going to go pretty straightforward and say, what's the volume? OK? Now, in order to find the volume of that, I don't need to figure out all of them. I just need to figure out one of them. And the calculus will take care of the infinitely many, infinitely thin. What calculus operation will that be, infinitely many, infinitely thin? Integration or differentiation? Integration. Integration. We'll, we'll integrate to sum all these. There will be in the sum of lots of slices. All right. What's this thickness? Uh, D. Yeah, it corresponds to this, and isn't that a small change right to left? So it is. Yes, yeah, it's super thin. Okay. This is, is that distance. Well, that's yeah, that's a very vertical distance, 
And so surely that's y, or y minus 0. But if it's going to be dx, then I'm not going to be going with y. I'll have to use y is equal version in x, and that's for x. x. What's the height? Also y. Why is that also y? Because you're using that as how much it's going to go up. Well, why is it going up what? Because they're squares, because they're squares. If it's squares, the base and height are the same, right? Yeah. So if these are square cross sections, this distance, which we know is y, will match this distance, which we know because it's a square. So then the integral will be pi, or pi, not pi, sorry, that's the a number one biggest mistake. You will see no pi here. There's no revolution. We only get pi's in the ones we've done because we were revolving and getting circular cross sections. There is no circle. There's no pi here. Okay? You're adding lots of squares, and you don't use pi when you find the volume of a square. So it's many, in essence, length times width times height, where I'm looking at root x times root x dx from where to where? Zero to four. To me, that's just beautiful calculus. That, that, that's pretty freaking complicated, right? Do you agree? And yet, I can find the volume of that crazy changing volume thing by integrating x. The volume of that is just 1 half x squared. All right, now these are super fun to draw. I get that. Just hold on. All right, so imagine now. So far, so good? Yeah. Can we make tacos? We'll make tacos. We'll make tacos. Okay. Do you have to draw this in test? Yes, you have to draw this. I expect you to draw. Are you great on Yes, it quality. Should, it should communicate. If the job is big or small, do it right or not at all. Okay? So, <laughs> if you would, as my dad always used to say. All right, so this next one, find the volume of cross sections parallel to the x-axis. Same region. So would you draw that perspective version of the square root graph? This line at 4, it should be perpendicular or parallel, excuse me, to the y-axis. Okay, the same base. I didn't say it straight out, but I want the same region here. Now this time, what's different is that the cross sections are parallel to the x-axis. So the stripes will no longer be this way. That's parallel to the y-axis. Parallel to the x-axis would be like this. However many you choose to draw. Just draw a few, one or two, three. Okay. Now there are squares. So when you go up and out, it should be the same length as the segment you just drew. Try and match the length of that segment. And then whoosh. <laughs> sure. Okay. Do you have the base of the region? All right. Here we go. <clears throat> parallel, parallel. So here. Okay. Now, did you draw segments parallel? Segments parallel to the x-axis. Yeah. Let's draw, maybe three of them will be enough. If you draw too many, it starts to get a little too busy. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's look at this first top segment. This is the base, and I'm supposed to be building off a square. So the height I'm going to make out of that is going to need to be the same way. Now, as far as what angle, make it perpendicular to that first segment. Now go to this one and draw perpendicularly the same length out of that one. And this same length 
Okay. Now this looks shorter. My perspective is probably wrong, but it is actually coming out. But you get the idea. I don't like that last one. I think it should be hotter. I'm going to make it higher. Okay. That's not as good as I can do, but that's okay. All right. Now, finding the volume of that. When I go to find the volume, I actually just get one square to look at. This one's a little more thicker. So, uh, the thickness, what is it? Dy. Dy, okay. So, think for yourself a second about what that bottom length is. Is it constant or variant? What is it attached to? How would I find it? Wouldn't you say that this one is four? Okay, how long is this one? Four minus whatever that is, maybe one. Four minus one, so maybe this is three. Uh, this might be four minus whatever that point is, so maybe two. So each time you find this, how are you finding how long it is? Four minus x, right? Okay, because that's four to the segment, and then it's x from the axis to that point, so I'm taking away four, taking away that x. So what's the height of each? Four minus, four minus x. So what's the integral? Length like times what times height? Are you based on time? Four minus x squared d. Oops. Yeah. Well, there you go. Then don't we have a problem? We can't go with x. We have to go with the function in y terms. So what is x equivalent to in y terms? Y equals x squared, so x equals, oh, sorry, square rooted, so x equals y squared. So these are going to actually have to be 4 minus y squared. So 4 minus y squared quantity squared dy from 0 to 4? 0 to 2. The oh, sorry, y squared, 4 minus y squared quantity squared. Thank you. Okay. What do you think? All right. Now, it's not always square cross sections. Sometimes it's rectangles, easy enough. Sometimes it's equilateral triangles. Sometimes semicircles. Sometimes it's an isosceles right triangle with the hypotenuse in the plane of the base. That's on the back. You get that. Okay. <laughs> oh, really? no, I don't even understand what you're saying. I'm going to go to the bottom. Look at this. I have great faith in your intelligence and your ability to read for information. So, rectangular cross sections. This time, in order to get you a little different region, um, let's say we look at in two dimensions y equals x and y equals negative x plus 4. And the y-axis, so this region in two dimensions. Yeah, that's the region we're going to build off of now. So in perspective, if you're going to draw it more at an angle. Draw y equals x through the origin. And y equals negative x plus 4. <clears throat> Crossing the y-axis at 4. Okay? This region in black is the base. Understood? Okay? So, uh, now it says <coughs> rectangular cross sections parallel to the y-axis. So, the first thing I'm going to do is draw parallels to the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. Draw one or two or three. Okay. Those are parallel to the y axis. <coughs> Excuse me. Each of these is a rectangle with height half the base. So on this first one, if the base is this long, then the height would be half that much. I'm going to come out like 
that much. Then this guy, the height would be only half as much as that segment, so that. And then half as much, we're starting to get smaller and smaller. And so it should come down to a point. <coughs> this? It is not parallel to anything in the base. It's kind of sticking out of That's the hard Okay. 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 So we need to find the volume of one of these. The volume of these is most definitely area of the base times the height or length times width times height. Um, what's the thickness? D. Yeah, 50 50 shot. DX. It is DX. Okay. Um, what about this? Um, G of X minus M of X. Yeah. Now, this will be the base and this will be the height. Can I give you a little pointer before you go into the equations? Go a little cleaner. So the volume of this is length times width times height or area of the base times the height. And the area of the base, it's base height, yeah? Mm -hmm. But the height is one half of the base. So isn't the area of the base just one half of B squared? You with me? Okay. Now then. Sounds like the revolt is really. Just wait for somebody to throw the pencil down and say, "Screw it, I'm not doing it." Almost there. All right then. Um, so, if you go in the geometry a little before you get into the equations, where we're headed, you'll find that things grow a little better. Um, are you with me up to this point? Okay. Barely. Oh, barely. All right. So I'll take the half out front, and the height we said is df. The thickness of the slices is dx. Now then, what the base squared, this distance is this, this, this. Vertical distance, upper minus lower. Upper minus lower is? G of x minus f of x. From? Never found the intersections. I guess I figured you'd find them mentally. Uh, <laughs> zero to two. Because those are the x. The, the axis is zero, and the intersection is at two. How we do that? Okay. All right. Well then, it's time for you to try. Same region, cross sections perpendicular. Sometimes they'll say parallel to this, sometimes they'll say perpendicular to that. Read carefully. But that's two regions. Perpendicular to the y axis that are rectangles with height two units. I'll give you a second. I will be happy to help you pop it over. Can you get over? You got to do it.
So this one's a little different, right? Yeah. Did these come down to a point at the end? The height is always two. Okay, so this will not come down to points at the end. It's not so much tied to how long these are. At this, it's two. At this, it's two. At this, it's two. This, two. All two. So if I looked at the top of this, what should the top look like? It, it should look exactly the same as the bottom. This is a prism. It's a straight up prism. It, all the heights are exactly two. So it should make a figure that's exactly on top like it is on bottom. It should look like that. Okay, so you could use geometry. It's It actually would not be bad. Um, if you did this by calculus, yeah, yeah, that's terrible. If we did this by calculus and integration, how many integrals? Two. Two integrals because we have two different right minus left situations. So um, the first one would be, let's say, in this lower section. What is the volume set up for this lower section? Okay, so let's go. This is 2, this is dx or dy, dy, and this length. Yeah? Okay, so it's right minus left in y terms. Which line is that? y equals x or y equals negative x y plus x equals x. So then what's the integral for that first lower section? 0 to 2, 2, 2 y, dy. 0 to 2, length, width, and height, 2, y, and dy. Okay? All right. Um, the upper section then, by upper section I mean the section that is tailed off by the y equals negative x plus 4 line. What's the volume set up for that? What are the limits? 2 to 4. Okay. What are these rectangles length, width, and height? 2 by negative y plus 4. 2 and dy. What else? 4 minus y. y equals uh, negative x plus 4, and y terms is 4 minus y. All right, how'd that go? At this point, when I planned my lesson, I expected you to be bored and think these are too easy. So now, I have such great expectations for your group. All right, let's go try this. What do you say? What do you say? Okay. Now, in order to get a feel for how actually some of you haven't seen this before, so I'm going to say Adam Miller talk. What? He 
Sorry, you've done this before. I need to get a feel for it. All right, so same, nope, not the same section. Wow, I'm really reaching here. I have that much appreciation for your brilliance. Y equals X squared, negative X plus two. The region looks like this, yes? Do you agree? Where do they meet? I at least made it factorable. It's not like it's free. Where do they meet? One in negative two. Okay. All right. Now, that region enclosed by those two graphs with perspective. Please try and draw that the best that you can. If you thought drawing lines was hard, wait till you try and draw for up. Okay. One, two. Okay. So that's your region with perspective. So far, so good? Okay. So don't worry about the equilateral triangle. First draw the slices. The slices are parallel to the y-axis. So make one or two slices, three slices. Make them parallel to the left. <clears throat> okay, now these slices are equilateral triangles. So they're going to pop out like this. <laughs> and I didn't necessarily do that very well, but that's the idea. They are all equilateral triangle, I can't try again. Okay. Okay, it would have a ridge, a bit of a convoluted picture now. It would have a ridge, a pointy ridge along the top before it descended back to its back edge. All right, now the good news is the governing fact is the, is the triangle itself. So worry about the triangle. All right. Write yourself a note, please. On equilateral triangles, use area equal one half AB sine C, not base height divided by two. All right. Now, I sh I, this whole time I've been kind of glossing over the whole geometry fact of this. Mainly because there are squares and rectangles and linked with the plane for which is fine. But these, the volume of this thing is going to be the sum of many prisms. And the area of the base is the area of whatever the face is, the triangle, the rectangle, the semicircle. In this case, it's one half A, B, sum of C. On an equilateral triangle, however, what do you know about, what are A and B stand for? Um, they're sides. Okay, so in an equilateral triangle, they're, they're the same. So one half A, A. Furthermore, angle C, what is it? 60 degrees, and what's the sine of 60 degrees? Five or three radians. I'm making me so sad. <laughs> Root 3 over 2. So you'll find on these equilateral triangle problems, if you do some of the geometry, don't rush into the equations. Okay, people say, I'm going to get the integral set. The integral will take care of itself. Get a clue first. Okay? Geometry is where you want to get your bearings. This all, in, all said then is root 3 over 4, whatever side is split. Now you say, okay, well, a side comes from this. What is that side, A? Where am I getting the geometry from or Wait, that? Can you just pull out the triangle? Sure. This triangle? Yes. What do you mean? Let me try this again. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so here's one triangle. 
There's one trying. Okay. So this slice, is this dx or dy? It's dx thick because it's left to right thick. Do you agree? Okay. So what about the length of a triangle side? Where does it come from? Just don't worry about the equation. Upper minus lower. Upper minus lower. And what is the upper? A varying point or a constant point? Varying. Okay. It's a varying point attached to the line. And what about the lower? It's constant or varying? Varying. Varying. And it's a varying point attached to the parabola. So I need to do line minus parabola in x or y terms. X. It's the x thick, so it's got to be an x terms. Line minus parabola in x terms. So my integral, when it's all said and done, is root 3 over 4. Why is that there again? Because it's the sine of 6. Uh, so 1 half A or B, sine C stuff in there, right? A squared. Oops, I'm going to need more room than that. A squared is a side squared. And we just said a side is always line minus parabola, so negative x plus two. Negative x plus two minus x squared dx from negative two to okay. Today's just get a clue day. Tomorrow we're gonna to practice it up. Okay. Do you have a clue? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Um, I was going to throw a you try at this point, but I was going to say that we'll just do it together. Okay. Sure. Okay. So the region enclosed, the region, is the base of a solid with cross sections parallel to the y axis that are isosceles right triangles with the hypotenuse in the plane of the base. Oh, okay. Read it again. Okay. If you're not sure, I totally understand. Read it again. Okay, cross sections parallel to the y axis, that part's comfortable, right? Parallel to the y axis is good. Like that, yeah? Except better. All right, now then, be careful. It says isosceles right triangles. So an isosceles right triangle is one with the right angle, and the legs obviously have to be the sides of the congruent. The hypotenuse can't be the congruent side. Okay? However, the way I have that is not quite okay because the hypotenuse is in the plane of the base. So this, these have to be the hypotenuse. So where's the triangle? Where's the right angle? It's at the top, exactly. It's the top, it's up here. Here's the right angle, and the hypotenuse is in the plane of the base. So if you were to draw this, and really, again, you just want one figure to look at. The 3D figure is fun to draw, but it's the triangle that really governs your work. <clears throat> um, now, I would say for this, for the volume is the sum of many prisms, for the area of the base, for this, you could do 1 half AB sine C and it's okay. Um, however, I think most students last year anyway felt this one. Okay. So, now we have some geometry for The base, will you be able to find the base one? What's the base going to come? It's, it's the upper minus lower. It's the actual calculus we normally do. The height, you have to do a little bit of work. So here's the height. This is where you're going to have to draw some geometry knowledge. What are these angles? They're 45. Uh -huh. So what does that mean about how the height relates to the base? The base divided by root 2 or just straight up divided by 2? Mm -hmm. 
What kind of triangle is that? That's a, that half is also 45, 45, 90, you see? And so what are these two sides? The 45, 45, 90, don't these two sides have to be the same? So what's the height? It's half the base. The height is half the base. So if I throw that in, then the area of the base is, or yeah, the area of the base is base times one half base over two, or base for one base. Yeah, one fourth of the square of the base. Now we're rolling. Okay. So here we go. Volume is notice no pi. Okay, don't just automatically throw pi down. There's no pies here. Um, so one fourth I can put out front. Base squared dx or dy? Yes. And what's the base? Negative. G of x minus f of x. I guess I could have said that in the last one. G of x minus <coughs> f of x. The line minus the parabola in x terms or y terms? X terms. Okay. Quantity squared from, still from uh, negative. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's go taco. Okay, so say we look at semicircles. Um, you have sine of x. Oh, Up to x squared. Okay. Here's the sine curve up to its max at pi over 2. And the x-axis. In this example, we're taking cross-sections parallel to the y-axis. So identify where would you put your stripes or your slices. So far, so good. Well, I'd be using dx or dy here. Yes. Okay. Now, semicircular cross sections parallel to the y-axis. So these are semicircles. So if you connected the upper ridge, it looks something like that. Cornucopia. Yeah. All right. Just in time for Thanksgiving. So we have volume of these cross sections. It's still many prisms. Here I definitely have a little piece of advice for you. That used to, these used to be killer and now people think these are the easiest ones. Or one of the easiest ones. Okay, so um, I think you'll agree we need the area of the base. The height will be dx or dy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the area of the base how do you find the area of that? Pi r squared over 2. I agree. The problem with that is the radius is from here to there, or here to there. In other words, you don't really have the radius. What you have is the diameter. And you'll always have the diameter of such a problem. And so let's consider that. If, instead of the radius, I'm going to have the diameter. What's the radius in diameter terms? Diameter, diameter over 2 squared. And so these volumes you'll be able to find by pi over 8 of the diameter over 8 of the diameter. If you can remember that, then it's so much easier to try and locate the middle point you know, half of the difference between, that's a mess, it's a mess, okay? Instead, just say it's pi over 8 of the diameter squared. So then, pi over 8, this is one of the few that does have a pi over, because there is a circle in here, diameter squared. You said it's dx. What's the diameter? Uh, yeah, it's just sine of x. Gee, we could do that without a calculator, a little power reduction, eh? That's not working. Okay. <laughs> integration from where to where? Zero to pi over two. Okay. Try that one, please. Try that one. 
It relates directly to, it's the height of the principles, yes. And it relates directly to how they tell you to slice it. This X and Y is not your choice. It comes straight from how they chose you to cross section it parallel or to the X axis or Y. So this is not like shells and stuff on you choose. Yes. Yeah, uh, oh, a like function of. So yes, to answer your question, they, for example. So this is used. This is actually. I mean, it might seem like this is just who could. You could use this to model, for example, the volume of a lake. This is kind of. If they measure, if they measure like distances at a couple places throughout the lake, then they start to get what the shape of a cross section would be. And sometimes the depth of that is a function of something totally different, like relative to one edge of the lake or the river, especially if it's a river. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty awesome, actually. OK, um, so dx or dy? dy. dy. Uh, limits 0 to pi over 2 or 0 to 1? 0 to 1. Diameter. Sine of y? Inverse sine of y? Pi over 2 minus. Well done. Pi over 2 minus inverse sine of y. Now that's the hard part to me. This It's not right minus left is pi over 2 minus sub x. And that needs to be replaced. So it's not just inverse sine of y, because that would actually be finding this distance, not this distance. Hi. Hi, Ms. Cannon. What? 7D or 7?